Welcome to the channel, folks. Clunkers and Classics. Where today, this episode, we're going to go ahead and paint the red on the 81 Silverado. Okay, we got the uh, first color on there. It's just a bunch of paint I mixed together and it came out this color. More of a burgundy, maroonish color but uh the plan was painting it black but i thought this might be a little bit more more better than uh plain black but uh i think it'll look all right okay so we're gonna paint the red from here down and then we're gonna mask off uh the two-tone stripe which is right around here okay some of the old style 70s would be just from here to here but well, we're going up here so that's what that's what originally was on this truck it was originally a two-tone well it was a two-tone when i got it i don't know if original original from the factory was or not probably was but okay so yeah i just been uh cleaning up all the door jams what you want to do is uh before you paint a car is to wash it but we washed this one already it's just it's been sitting in here for days probably just got some dust on it uh we're just going to wipe it down with a wet paper towel and i think that'll be good enough because i don't really it's kind of drizzly and rainy out i got all this stuff here I don't think it's, we got all the dirt off of it. It's just dust now. So I've been wiping down the jams. Before I paint it, I will wipe down the rest of the body that's going red. Okay, uh, so yeah, we we got to spot in some little areas. I, I'm not, not sure where this white come from. But we're just going to spot in... Uh, spot in some red in the door jams before and then I'll slam the door and then paint the whole the whole truck uh, we got to take off this these belt moldings we got new ones there's just little clips there they'll just pop out uh, I'll take them out um, yeah so Okay, so how we're going to do this is I got some uh, 3M quarter inch tape. Uh, I don't really like this tape that much. I bought it because it was cheaper than 3M. Actually, it's made in, made in Italy. I bought a whole stack of it here. We'll hope it sticks. Because <laughs> if it doesn't stick, going to get get the cats out of here. Uh going to get paint over spray up underneath which we don't want so we're going with the quarter inch uh, we're going to do it along the bottom too because we don't want a whole bunch of tape we don't want the big thick tape on here it's more of a chance of it peeling off so we do use this quarter inch and then a piece of paper with the other tape go over top of here okay so this 3m will stick really good just worried about the three quarter inch. Okay, uh, the two tone color uh, from factory would have a bunch of stripes. I don't know what this one had black and something, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to put no stripes on it, plastic stripes. We're gonna we're gonna leave this color as a stripe along it and I'll show you how to do that so where do we where the color well where the stripe ended was right below this door handle so basically we're going to get a piece of tape uh, let's see here we want a space We want a space below this door handle here. 
So we'll use a quarter inch space. Okay. Now what we're going to do is measure from here to here. All the way along that body line. And then, well, we'll just use a little piece of tape, you know, from here to here to here. And then run a piece of tape like a pinstripe and eyeball it. But we don't want it, you know, if it's a eighth inch off, it ain't going to matter too much. But we don't want it a couple inches off and look all weird. So, okay, that's going to be red underneath there. So it's going to be red from here. Then we want one stripe. I'll just get a cut off a few pieces here. Okay, so this is going to be maroon, red, the maroon. I'll just call it maroon, although it's more burgundy. And then red. Be a red stripe there and that one more we're gonna redo all this I'm just putting this on here to show y'all so uh, from here down will be this color, then a red stripe, and then a burgundy stripe, and then this will be this will be red. This will come off. This is just for a spacer for that a spacer, so we can go all the way down the sides. So that's we need three pieces of tape on there, and then. Uh, and this is just for a space or two, this middle one, see? Well, hang on, a little burgundy, yeah. And then after, this is just a spacer so you can get this even and that even. You get an even space in between here. You can see I put that on crooked so it's not even there. So burgundy, then red, burgundy, and then from, from here up, be red. Okay, so we're going to start with this stripe here, and I'm going to run it all the way around to come down, and it comes down, and we're going to use a space, uh, same thing, about a quarter inch space in between this molding, like that, see? And then we'll start with the stripe there and it'll go down to here so the bottom's real easy it just goes across the marker like there and we got the uh, and you got the holes for some of the molding but we got the new molding which is going to go from here so this doesn't have to be perfect at all just the molding's going to be perfect cross like that okay so what I'm gonna do is uh, run this tape here all the way down okay so I'll be back in a few minutes okay guys I got the first first piece of tape on there that's your guide to doing the below it, okay? Now here I just marked a piece of tape with a black, so I got the same distance from here to here, here to here, all the way across, except for this fender here. You can see this body line here curves down to this one. So you gotta kinda, I guess what you could do, be measure it from here to here, here to here. But I I just kinda free-handed it. Uh, 
and curved it down here and then come see this is just your spacer this tapes coming off okay so you were gonna do uh, a couple of more below that okay so I'll be back okay as you can see I got four of them okay so this top one we're not gonna need now when you peel this off save it for the other side as you know that masking tape ain't cheap so we're going to take that one off this here is just the guide for the paper we're going to use paper from there to here so we want to take the middle one out nothing like that see it'll be paper from here down then that'll be your red so it'll be like maroon red maroon and then from here up red so if you can kind of see how it's gonna come along okay so let me uh, let me take this tape off here and put it on the other side okay I'll be back okay guys so all we're going to do is run some paper from this line to this line. And I left this. We'll have to do that because I want to get get in here red. And we're going to mask from over from here over so we can open the door. So I'm painting a little red in there. Just got, uh, got the two-tone mask there. And then right in here and there. So let me run some uh, paper and cover up what's going to stay and then we'll carry on from there. We're going to have to sand all this, scuff it down a little bit. Okay, I'll be back. Got some, uh, I'm probably going to run out. I'm probably not going to paint it today because, uh, uh, it'll probably be late by the time I get done and I'll have to buy some more paper probably go in the morning and get some more I got that paper and some old used stuff there but I'd rather use all new stuff so it doesn't have any dust or anything on it but we may reuse some of that we'll see how far we get okay I'll be back well how you doing Nikki? How you doing over there? Just hanging out, chilling? <laughs> You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Bunch of people want me to give you a belly rub. People want me to give you a belly rub. <laughs> Nikki's doing good. I don't know if she likes it out here or in her cage better, but... How you doing, Nikki, Nikki? Good girl. You're a good girl. Nikki's a good girl. Nikki's a good girl. Nikki's a good girl. Nikki's a good girl. <laughs> okay, I just thought I'd give you a glimpse of Nikki over there with the cats. Okay, uh, I got it masked up on this side and what I've been doing is sanding sanding the burgundy color so basically you just scuff her down what I got is a bunch of this uh, 600 grit but you can do it 400 or 320 don't matter and uh, just kind of get the edge down at the line there It ain't gonna take much, just just enough to scuff it. And just kinda do this and get the stripe here. And we'll do a little extra sanding to get this edge off, but 
keep doing that till it's smooth. Basically like that. So, uh, you know, the bottom's already sanded. So, uh, I'll do this and then I'm going to do the other side. Mask it and stripe it so you can kind of see where the stripe's going. Okay. I'll be back when I get the other side done. Okay, guys. It's next day. Got it mostly masked up. Need to do the windows. And, uh, figure I'd go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and paint this, uh, uh, paint and primer ultra matte Walmart stuff. Go ahead and paint this radiator support. Put a couple of coats on there. But meaning to do this, I just <laughs> I didn't want to do it after it's painted red and get black spots everywhere. Anyway, let me finish that. I used a brush with some flat black and did these. This was all rusty. Kind of dabbed it on there, got the belt moldings off. But yeah, let me uh, mask the rest of it off and uh, I'll be back. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to paint. A few people ask about the compressor. It's just a 20 gallon. Whatever, if you can read that. Uh, it's good enough to paint. I don't run out of air unless you're... Well, I don't run out of air, but if you're just using it in your in your garage for yourself, uh, that's plenty of air. You don't need one of those big industrial ones. Those are only for a shop with, you know, six people running air stuff. You don't need that for your garage. Nice to have, but you don't need it. That'll, that'll handle any air tool. And if you run out of air, you just stop for a few minutes and have a cigarette and wait until it builds up. But I don't run out of paint because I don't paint 100 PSI like uh, <laughs> just watch Bad Chad paint a, paint a car there. That guy, man, he put some pressure out. Wastes half the paint blowing around in the air. Uh, so you don't need to do that. Pressure wise, uh, can't read it. I just do it till it feels good. Got my cheap $10 Harbor Freak gun. Uh, we painted the first color with it, turned out great. Uh, so yeah, that's just how we're gonna do it. Just like the first coat. Be a little tricky getting up here, painting the roof. I should probably get a chair or stool or something to get up there. Other than that, uh, we're just gonna go, I'll set you up on a tripod here <coughs> with the GoPro camera and I usually start like halfway start halfway on the hood do the fender go over do the other half of the hood and keep and then come back around and do this side of the bed and door then that side of the bed and door then end up with the tailgate uh, people do it different ways. One guy says, oh, you're supposed to spray from one end to the other. Like a spray like this and just keep going all the way around. <laughs> no, I, do, I don't know don't know anybody that does that. So, I don't know what the hell he was talking about. You basically just do one panel, one or two panels at a time. Uh, you know, one panel like this, and one panel like that, and move over. You don't walk around the whole car in one continuous stream. Okay, uh, but, well, you guys can see how I do it from the, and if you watch the last video on this, you'll see how I did that. You got to keep it all wet. That's why you got to keep switching sides. You got to keep it all wet. It's pretty hot out today and sunny, uh, so it's going to dry pretty fast. Okay, what paint am I using? I'm using this eBay paint that I bought years ago. I think I bought it for my 85 Corvette, but I never ended up using it. 
Uh, I ended up using some base clear that I had. Uh, I, don't, I can't remember how much it was. It's called High Glass Candy Apple Red. Uh, there's the mix paint with one part hardener, one two parts reducer. I think it's acrylic enamel, but it doesn't even say on here. I don't know if it does or not. I think it is. Uh, I used the re hardener years ago for something else. I just went and got uh, from the local paint store this stuff here. Super wet look hardener. So we're going to use that. And then you can just use any reducer using this. Nissan full base reducer. So paint hardener and reducer mix it together until it's uh, you thin it out a little. I usually thin it out a little bit more than usual. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna mix all that up. Not all of it, I'll mix like half of it. And then if I need any more, I'll mix as I go. This ain't gonna take a lot of paint. It's not like you're painting a whole truck because one color is already painted. So, probably going to take half a gallon. Have plenty left over. So, yeah, that paint was free. Same with the uh, black. Black acrylic enamel. And I mixed a bunch of paint that I had base coat in with that to, to come up with the maroonish burgundy color. Uh, that is acrylic enamel. Got that off eBay. So if you're if you're painting, it didn't cost me anything. I bought this for the El Camino, and uh, chalked it up on that. So uh, if you're buying a paint kit with paint reducer and hardener, it's probably you know this one was like 111 bucks, but I think they upped it to 127. Uh, uh, red would be more, I don't know, between 150 and 200 bucks. Somebody mentioned they got a Viper Red or something kit for 200. So, you know, 150, 200 bucks, you can paint a vehicle. You don't need to, and don't, don't cheap out and buy uh, tractor paint or any of that stuff. Buy at least acrylic enamel minimum and then uh, and use your hardener. If you don't use your hardener, the thing's just going to bake away and never really fully dry be kind of rubbery you won't be able to buff it so use hardener uh i think yeah okay i think that's all i wanted to go over so yeah i'm just using stuff i have this is called titled extreme budget build and that's well i'm gonna mix up a little red paint and do the in, like i said the inside of these door jams a little bit a little red paint there there uh, just very very low pressure slam the door and then we'll paint the rest of the truck okay oh, I forgot to put on the wheel covers so put on some wheel covers and set you on a tripod and uh, I'm not going to worry about overspray on the on the bed like I said it's better than what it did look like and uh, I'm not going to waste time and masking tape and paper to tape it up it's it is what it is. It's better than it was. Okay, so I think that's it, guys. Uh, I just wiped it down. I would like to to have washed it, but you know, it's it's kind of hard to do after you already done. I paint. I washed it before I painted the first color, but after that, it's you can't sand this until you mask it, and you can't wash this. It screw up all the tape. Uh, so I wiped it down with a wet paper towel and then I'm going to use this uh, tack rag here and go over it for any little pieces of the paper towel and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that, put on the wheel covers, tack it down with the tack cloth, mix up the paint, spray a little bit of the jams, uh, and then I'll set you up on a tripod. And I always use this fan here big fan and close the door it's not windy at all out uh, so 
something like that. Sometimes I'll put a piece of cardboard over here to, uh, if it's real windy out or something, but I think it'll be all right. So yeah, uh, I think that's all I need to go over. So you'll be on the uh, on the old GoPro camera there as I paint. Uh, I will fan out the use something like this to test out your pattern. So I'll be doing that first. You know, you, if you're doing a little like painting the inside of this jam, you just need a little little pattern. But then you spread it out as much as you can without too much overspray on it. Just a big pattern about that big. And that's your paint length when you're painting. Okay, so I'll be doing that. I'll show you the pattern. You'll see the patterns. And then uh, as I'm adjusting it. And then we'll just start over here and start painting. Uh, since it's warm out, I'll probably just go one after another. Uh, I don't know if I'll stop and start this... Uh, the other camera because you won't be able to see me painting the other side so before I was just stopping and starting and concentrating on one side but anyway I'll figure that out as it goes
Okay, that's one coat.
Okay, guys, it's been about an hour. Got three coats on it. Turned out pretty good. Got a few bugs, springtime. This little guy here. But after the second coat, can't see it now. He landed on here and he walked. He was kind of a big bug. Went all the way up like this. And I, actually, I think it's right there. And I picked him off with a piece of paper towel. And then, of course, the next coat flowed in all his footprints. Anyway, there's a little bug up there. A little bit of trash, but she'll look, she'll look really good outside. So, it's kind of dry to the touch, but it, it will leave a fingerprint in it. So, I'll probably unmask the paper that's holding the second color the first color on there so we can get a good look at it but uh yeah it turned out pretty good pretty shiny back here yeah we need to see it outside but it's fixing to get dark here in a little bit see the roof Well, okay. Yeah, I think I'll, uh, in a little while, I'll take off this paper and we'll, uh, we'll see what it looks like. Can't pull it outside, but okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, there it is. This, uh, color here is a little dusty. But, uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I think what I'd do if I had some black pinstripes is to maybe outline this in black or something, but it looks all right. Yeah, well, that's it, guys. Tell me what you think. Uh, next video on this we'll bring her outside and uh i gotta clean it steel wool all the chrome wheel well moldings paint the inside of it flat black uh put on the tail light harness tail lights rear tailgate deal uh mirrors weather stripping belt moldings just tons of stuff so what we'll do yeah, and those big chrome side moldings they were the most ex one of the most expensive things i bought with this truck 138 bucks i think it was but man it's going to really set it off uh and then we'll go over how much i spent on this so you can all guess if you want it's not very much uh yeah i didn't take the wheel covers off this side but yeah when you take the tape off you want to take the tape off these areas here from the new paint uh before it dries right about this condition here where it's you can touch it but it'll leave fingerprints because if it dries completely dries hard uh it might peel off some of that paint now if you were doing a clear on it a base clear you would yeah just peel this off like i just did have this already sanded and then clear the whole truck but i don't think it needs to be cleared i think it's good enough i said it's cheap paint acrylic enamel we don't know how long it'll last but uh anyway yeah i think it looks pretty good there's a stripe around the front so yeah we'll have one more video putting it all together uh gonna do a few other little things too uh i did change the spark plugs but i didn't do the wires of the cap and i bought new wires and a cap for this 
and now uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that and maybe a few other little things but we'll go over that the next video on this but the next video I got from a sponsor a brand new set of long tube headers these are these are just some extra collector things but yeah uh, I got them and then actually another set of these cutouts I was gonna put the one set on the I rock if they'll fit without hitting the ground but I got another set so one of my cars is going to get some exhaust brand new exhaust cutouts and brand new long tube headers so guess which one it is and I like headers unlike who, who is it doesn't like headers Mortsky Mortsky don't like headers Craigers uh, stuff or flexi hoses <laughs> I love headers. I, I, uh, it was up to me. I'd put them on every car I own. So anyway, yeah, we're going to do all that. But I ordered uh, some mufflers. So I'm kind of waiting on that. Some really long, two foot long, uh, are they glass packs? Something like glass packs. So basically, the car is going to get a whole new exhaust system right from the engine all the way back. I just got to buy a few little things, maybe some little, those little downspout looking things for the end of the tailpipes. But yeah, guess which one, and we'll try to do it all, well, we'll do it all in one video. Uh, that'll be the next video I'll be working on. So that'll come up, and then, because well, we got to let this dry for a few days, and then after that, we can, uh, get this put together and go over what it costs to build it and that then we'll get back on the IROC <laughs> so lots of content coming up guys uh, so anyway uh, like comment share subscribe bottom right hand corner of the screen it's free doesn't cost anything and uh, We'll see y'all next video. What you doing over there, Nikki? How you doing, girl? <laughs> How's Nikki doing? How's Nikki doing? Nikki's a good girl. Nikki's a good little old girl. Nikki's a good girl. Little belly rub. Little belly rub. Nikki likes a little belly rub. We had some snacks today, didn't we? We had some snacks. Nikki, Nikki likes her snacks. <laughs> Nikki likes that grass. <laughs> Nikki likes that grass. <laughs> what you doing, Nikki? <laughs> what you doing, Nikki? <laughs> You're such a good girl. 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 And if you're new, Nikki's my blind dog. Well, she's doing okay for a blind dog. <laughs> she does this in the house, too. Okay, guys. Well, I said thanks, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you all next video.